And as Robert Louis Stevenson said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but rather by the seeds you plant. And that's what knowledge is. That's what the learning process is, is you're learning something today that you may not even understand how it's going to be valuable. But one day, that piece of knowledge is going to come to your aid one day. That thing that you learned is going to be something that you're going to lean on one day. That thing that you've worked your ass off to understand better than anybody else in the world. It's going to help you change the world. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn through hard work, and I can beat the Val Victorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that Val Victorian study for an hour, and you know I caught you. I caught you, and I am dumb. But I have the work ethic to catch you. Whatever you need to do, do it. Stop crying, and just keep hustling. You're stronger than you think. You haven't discovered all that's in you. You'll never know how strong you really are until you face pressure that you've never faced. You put in 120% every time or you don't put in nothing because listen to me very closely. Today, this opportunity you have, it might not be here next year. It might not be here the year after next. It might not be here the year after that. This is the only moment you've got and you better take advantage of this particular moment. By continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream. I've got what it takes to make it. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. You need to care about everything, and it starts with yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Do that. As Han Solo said, never tell me the odds. Never tell me what box I'm in. Never tell me what I'm up against. Never tell me about your limitations. Never tell me about my limitations. Because that, my friends, is what you have to break free from. And nine times out of 10, I can tell you why you started. You started because you were hungry. So many people float down the river of life without ever even putting their paddles in the water, just hoping and praying and dreaming and wishing that they're going to end up somewhere good. Guys, that's not how life works. You know, you have paddles in your boat. You just got to learn to use them. The first step in really empowering yourself, the first step in really going beyond what you thought is possible, is actually to stop judging other people. To stop looking at them and trying to put them in a box because as you build boxes to put other people into, you inevitably put yourself into a box. I'm telling you, I've been thinking, I've been making calls. That's what I'm asking you to do. What fuels you? The reason why you're so lazy is not because you don't have the ability. You're so lazy because your dream's so small. The whole game's broken because everybody's too tied up into other people's opinions. I only care about my opinion of myself. And I care what my mom and wife and kids and the world think. Just not as much as I care about the way I think about myself. When you feel like throwing in the towel, when you feel like surrendering everything you work for, remember why you started. Remember how you felt when you started. You were hungry someone right now, they're putting in that work. 
And if you don't, the future is going to belong to them. Hunger is the feeling of discomfort or weakness caused by a lack of food coupled with a desire to eat. How hungry are you? Here's the worst part about that, it's right. If you quit right now, if you stop, you're not at risk of embarrassment, you're not at risk of failure, but you're also not at risk of greatness. Paul Harvey said that you can tell you're on the road to success because it's uphill all the way. Mm. And I'm here to tell you uh, this something for nothing entitlement mindset that invades so many people's lives is a bunch of garbage. Mm. I, I can promise you uh, nothing that I've ever had worthwhile uh, did, did I have just kind of fall into my lap like, oh my goodness, I won the lottery. And I, and I once in a while people win the lottery. But basically the people that win the lottery, half of them lose their money within three years, the money they won. And it's because they got money, but they never changed the way they thought. And can I tell you something? If you have all the assets in the world, but you don't change the way you think, you'll lose all the assets in the world. And, and, and what I have discovered in, that, in this whole process of trade-offs is that every step of the way of my journey, I have to trade something off. And it's the, and for you that are young, the good news is your trade-offs will never be easier than when you're young. Because I remember when I when I when Mark and I started out, I think, man, you know, I gave up everything. I went, I was, I was a pastor to go in the ministry. I gave up everything, and then I start smiling. I thought, <laughs> I'm sure, I gave up everything. I didn't have anything to give up when I did. I, I was a kid. You know what I mean? I had a. 1964 Ford Falcon and you know a U-Haul trailer and five pieces of furniture and life was grand and off off we went. Here's what I've discovered, Ken, and I think that uh, I want the audience and I want everybody watching around the world to know today. And this this is very simple. The more successful you become, the higher the trade-offs are. You see, we make a mistake thinking it gets easier. It doesn't get easier. It gets harder. And the more you have, every time you go back and say, "Am I willing to risk that again?" the more you realize, wow, I'm not sure I, I am willing to risk this. And what I've learned is it, the moment I stop making trade-offs is the moment that I plateau. And life is continually filled with trade-offs. In your life and in my life, we, my, my expression I use all the time, Ken, you've heard me you say this, you have to give up to go up. You gotta ask yourself, is it gonna give me the return? So in the area of strengths, you gotta pour yourself into the things that you're already good at because that'll really set you apart from average. Yeah but in areas of choices. Go for those weaknesses. Because you and I, don't, don't you know people that are highly skilled, but they have a lousy attitude or they're not, oh. self, they're not self disciplined the attitude. And they're never, going to, they're, never going to, they're never going to get anywhere. And they're not going to get anywhere because they didn't. So in areas of choices, work on your weaknesses. But in areas of strengths and skills, just work on your strengths.